Hey man, special shout out to my guy Paris. Man, he had commented something on the video and I read it and I was like, hold up. So I commented back and like, don't be coming on a video disrespecting people like that. And he was like, no, I wasn't disrespecting nobody. Don't be, and it was just this back and forth. And I was like, hold up. Maybe I just misunderstood the original comment. And he was like, well, I, I probably should have made it a little more clear who I was directing it at. I apologized, he apologized. And that was it. And I, I just wanted to shout him out because, you know, with, with text, with, when you hear somebody saying something, then you can have a much more clear understanding of what it is that they mean. But when you have to see it via text, and I would know we've all went through this before, text can get so misinterpreted so easily. But the reason that I wanted to commend him because I appreciated him uh, being willing to address it and still have the conversation even though initially I misunderstood what he meant I misunderstood his intent so that I told him that was on me that was my fault um, but he still continued the conversation respectfully and ended it respectfully so I really appreciated that and, and sometimes like y'all know I can be very protective over team keep it clean because my goal when we started this channel and really when we started especially doing questions from subscribers because we had some questions that are like oh come yeah yeah that's that's reasonable then we had some questions where it's like whoa but i wanted to create a a safe space a safe atmosphere um where people could come with their some simple questions maybe more logical questions or some people could come out with some crazy thoughts and then when you think about it a lot of those crazy thoughts they're not so crazy but I wanted this to be a safe environment for people where they wouldn't have to feel like if they come up with this crazy idea, then oh, people are going to be like, oh, they're, they're going to down it. If they come up with this idea that nobody else is talking about, well, they're going to be like, they got to be ashamed of it. No, let's talk about it. So that's questions from subscribers it's for everybody. Everybody can contribute and tell how they feel about whatever it is that they think. So just had to give a special shout out to my guy, Paris. Appreciate y'all. Let's get into this episode. Yeah. Like a dream, and you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. We got a lot of great questions to get into. Let's do it. First question came from my boy Martin. He said, I ain't graving. I hope all is well with you and the fam. I just want to start off by saying I disagree with you on the cap is cap. Okay, let's see what my boys got to say. I love it already. He said, however, I'm typing this while I'm on my lunch break, so another topic for another uh, day. Anyway, oh, that, you, you really just trolled me like that? I thought you was really about to go in and be like, hey, engraving, this is why the cap is capping. This is why everything with that you say about the cap being cap is wrong. But then you hit me with that swerve. All right, let's see what you're about to say. Um, he said, I do believe the Ravens should be more aggressive. For example, with Zadarius Smith, maybe he would have still signed if you offered three or four more mil. In most cases, when Ravens get into bidding wars, they are the first ones to back out because they are cheap. I'm not saying we have to spend 20 mil on everyone as well as make, so, make some trades for players on their rookie deals. Heck, I really want the Ravens to trade for Amari Cooper. Yeah, this cap would have been big, but maybe you can restructure someone's contract but if it got us a super bowl i'm all for it even if the bill will come due one day so he just expressing his thoughts about really wanting the ravens uh to go all in now as far as the bidding wars yeah this is darius smith they 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 thought they had him for a cheap deal and apparently he agreed to that cheap deal then he looked around and said hold up i'm the only one getting a cheap deal i'm straight no no thanks um, but then it turned out that the deal that he got with the Vikings, because it has like a, a dummy year on the back end of it, um, it was like it was for a little more than what the Ravens deal was. But it wasn't like, oh, my goodness, it's significantly that much more. Um, they got into a bidding war with the Rams and they offered more just straight up guaranteed money than the Rams. So but Bobby Wagner chose the Rams. Marcus Williams, they were in the bidding war with the Eagles. I'm not sure if anybody else was in a bidding war, but they they the Eagles offered him a deal too, but the Ravens deal was more. So they they actually won that bidding war. 
But I know with the norm, we we so used to hearing, um, oh man, if there's gonna be a bidding war, then count the Ravens out. But maybe Eric DeCosta may be trying to turn a page on that. Hopefully he is, and but hopefully they do it more on offense too. Next question came from Draven. He said, how much value do you put on backup QB Tyler Huntley? And if Seattle is looking for a QB, how much would you throw in on a Huntley for DK deal? Meaning draft picks. Huntley in the second and fifth rounder for DK is what I'm thinking, but wanted to know your opinion. Would it be a good move? Oof. Oh, Huntley and a second rounder. Mm. And a fifth rounder. I wouldn't mind that at all. I wouldn't. I would not be opposed to that at all. Um, Ravens will keep their first round pick And if hey you know what if they wanted another First round pick if they wanted a second round pick uh, You had pick number 14 You could trade back you could trade down in the first Round if you want to get some more ammo uh, I'm sure somebody would be willing to give you a first And a second round pick for that 14 pick uh, So you would have options um, But I would not Be opposed to that deal At all Tyler Huntley he gets an Opportunity to possibly start because of him Versus Drew Locke versus I don't know who else, who else they got um, yeah, second, you get rid of a second round pick, but for a proven player, yeah, sign me up. Next question came from my boy King Jamie. He said, What's up, Engraving? I'm sending love and well wishes to you and your family, uh, and everybody that's tuned into the channel. Hey, appreciate that. Uh, he said, I had a quick question. What do you think about the Ravens draft picks? Do you think they might uh, pick up a cornerback to add to the roster? Oh, for sure. You know they will, but the question really is, How early will they do it? It all just depends on how the draft falls. Uh, but anyway, he said, I say Andrew Booth would be a dope move. That kid is a dog and has potential and could fit right in with Humphrey and Marcus Peters or maybe Derek Stingley Jr. Out of LSU, that's another young player that could resemble Jalen Ramsey. Uh, I'm not mad at Eric DaCosta, but man, it seems like we always quiet early in free agency. No cap. Yeah, that's the Ravens all day. Um, something that I've been thinking about. I started thinking about it yesterday. Um, today is today's April 12th, by the way. It's April 12th at 3.15 p.m. Um, I was thinking about like, man, we we expected it, but literally have heard nothing about a possible extension with Marcus Peters. Um, I know it could happen at any time, like literally any time because he's on the last year of his deal. So it could happen now. It could happen during the season. It could happen any time, um, but it hasn't happened yet. So we know we, we always talk about on here, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Um, that's just something that I wonder about, though. I wonder if the Ravens, are, are, are they going to be like, all right, Marcus, let's ride this last year, year out, and then we're moving on. Or, or, or if they'd be like, all right, Marcus, let's sign an extension. Uh, I just, I'm wondering. I, I would think it would be more along the lines of signing an extension, but sometimes you never know. You never know. Um, so that's going to be interesting. And then if, if they were to select a, uh, if they were to select a cornerback in the first round, would that mean that all right, Marcus Peters was done with the Ravens or the Ravens were done with Marcus Peters after this year? I mean, you, of course, would want the more the merrier. You're like, you want all the cornerbacks you could possibly get, in, especially the quality cornerbacks, especially going up against all the wide receivers the Ravens are going to be going up against, especially in that AFC. Um, but that's just something that I think about. So I wouldn't be mad at Booth Jr., but I wonder what that would mean. This question came from Sedari, and he said, David Ajabo Stash. Hey, Engraven, hope you and the fam are doing well. Hey, we're doing really good. I hope you're doing even better. He said, I was thinking about David Ajabo's pro day injury and how he may be lower on draft boards now. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, with Mike McDonald's insider knowledge of him, do you think it's worth trading back into the first round and making him the Ravens' second pick? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that he'll be a first-round pick. I don't. I think the, the, the lowest he'll drop is to late second, maybe early. I just, I don't know about early third. Um, but I just, I don't think he'll be a first round pick. Uh, because, yeah, good player, but you may not, worst case scenario, you won't get him at all this year. Best case scenario, he may come back a little later in the season, whatever, we'll see. But, and with doctors nowadays and technology, you, you really never know. Um, no, I, I second round, second round, I do. Like I, with with me, with depending on what it is. With the second round, I'm, I'm a lot more flexible with the second round pick. Second round pick, oh, okay, go ahead, send it. Like the, my guy earlier said, second round pick and Tyler Huntley in the fifth round pick for DK Metcalf. Oh yeah, send it away. David Ajabo, second round pick. Ooh, second round pick at 14 though. Oof. <laughs> for a player that may not even play this year, mm, maybe. Uh, probably not though. Ah, mm, cause it'd be a long term investment, but. Right now, like we need somebody right now. Uh, Pernell McPhee going, Tyus Bowser out. Um, who else? Jalen Ferguson, big question mark. Dalen Hayes, question mark. 
Uh, so I don't know, man. But the second round pick at fourteen, probably not for me. Uh, but for people who would do it, I'm not mad at that. Uh, he said, I feel this is where the fifth year option will come in handy because it allows the Ravens to redshirt his rookie season. Oh, man, look at that. <laughs> see, I, I wasn't even thinking about none of that. You See, you thinking way ahead with the fifth round uh, option. I mean, the fifth year option. He's too smart. He said, I know spending a first round pick on an injured player wouldn't bring immediate success, but it would be worth it in the long run due to his talent. Oh, with Tyus Bowser dealing with the same situation, there could already be rehab a rehab plan in place. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Maybe the Ravens could move up in the second round and somehow acquire an additional second rounder to grab him. Love your channel. and hope this year's draft goes well. The Ravens haven't had a rookie of the year candidate in a while. Oof. Didn't even think about that one. Um, but yeah, that's I like how you put it in and, and the things that the points that you brought out about the fifth year option. And yeah, just really having him for that long amount of time. Uh, and the talent level too, um, but mm, mm, that see, that's it's such a it makes it such a tough decision because if you get back in the first round again, you got so many players that can play right now. And with David Ajabo, if he can't, it, it's it's an unknown if he can play for you right now. It would be risky, very risky. But ah. Uh, I don't, I don't think I would do it in the first round. Next question came from my guy, Jerron. He said, hey, Graven, just wanted to hear your thoughts and opinions on one Derek Stingley. He was cleared to run and do drills in his pro day where he ran a blazing 4.37. Uh, and he's listed at 6'1", weighs 195. In 2019, he played the most coverage snaps in all of college football while being targeted the second most. Uh, and his reception target ratio was 36-94. I think he's a good fit for the Ravens, especially now that he's clear of all his injuries. Thanks for listening to my rant about Derek Stingley. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. I don't think he makes it that far. 14? Nah. I don't I don't think so. Injury history? Yeah, that could push him down. But 40 time, that'll cancel that out and push him right back up. People see that 40 time and they go crazy. They go crazy. Um, and that 40 time, it, it can make you pick somebody that you might not have picked before. It can make you look at somebody completely different than you weren't looking at them before. Um, that, the, that 40 time, it, it will really boost you. So I don't even think he makes it to the Ravens. So they won't even have a decision to make. Next question came from my guy, Garrett. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well and the fam is doing better than ever. My friend and I were wondering your thoughts on what the Ravens would give up for DK Metcalf in a trade perspective if we were to get him. Also, do you think we should sign anyone else in free agency, especially a center or a defensive lineman? Again, hope all is well and I hope to see a better... A way better and a way healthier Ravens team in the near future. Oh, <laughs> I don't think anybody would disagree with you on that. Um, DK Metcalf, I, I, I like my guy's trade proposal from uh, earlier in this episode. The Tyler Huntley second and a fifth round pick. Oh, that, that would be sweet. And we get DK Metcalf back. And you know what? Give us DK Metcalf in like a fifth or sixth round pick too. Just a little bonus. Um, but as far as your other question, uh, do you think we should sign anybody else in free agency? Um, they could sign a, uh, a veteran pass rusher um why they could sign a wide receiver you know i would rather them trade for one um because who's like really out there right now that's a free agent you got jarvis landry he'd be straight but i feel like we would need something different than jarvis landry you know he, he would be cool and i feel like he would have a big impact on the team if they were to sign a jarvis landry i wouldn't be mad at that but uh he's nice but he just Ah, I don't know. He he's nice. It's it's weird with Jarvis Landry, man, because he's a good receiver, but I just feel like the Ravens need a, a bigger like a, a playmaker, a, a a a more explosive wide receiver. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if they signed Jarvis Landry because he could work the underneath game, work the middle of the field and whatnot. Uh, and he's tough, got the leadership and all that. So that's that stuff that's that goes both on and off the field. Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be too mad at it, but anyway, um, as far as anybody else, uh, yeah, probably D lineman, D lineman, um, edge guys. Um, uh, as far as center, they could, but I don't think they will. I think Patrick McCarry is gonna be the guy. That's that's what everything's looking like, man. Uh, look like Patrick McCarry, he's gonna end up being the guy for them. Um, so only time will tell, but. Based off of the action so far, of course, the draft could change everything. But until then, it's looking like it's going to be number 65. Next question came from my guy, Vinicius. He said, greetings from Brazil. Hey, what's up, man? 
Like you say, your channel is the only channel that uh, when I have dinner, I need to watch every day. <laughs> okay, appreciate that. Uh, you're so passionate and always have a good vibe with a lot of information. To be honest, you're my raven source for a while, a long while. Uh, hey, I appreciate that. Thank you for uh, even supporting for a long while. Appreciate it. Uh, he said, here are my takes for this season. Dan Daniel Jeremiah said from sources that Lamar is so focused on this offseason that anyone saw that before. Uh, so that's a huge thing. Yeah, that's what they've been saying. Lamar been extra focused on this season, on improving his game, improving his numbers, betting on himself, and he's shooting for the stars. So shout out to him. Uh, another thing, he said, our team is playing in a league that changes so fast that we can't keep up. So we need the Ravens to change their culture a lot faster. Ooh, I would agree with that as, as, as far as the, the philosophy, uh, the, the way that they operate. Um, and they don't have to completely change everything, but just to make some – Fine tuning and some adjustments here and there to really keep pace because you don't want to get left behind. I right, said so the NFL is no longer linebackers running after running backs, but edge rushers trying to get to the quarterback. Uh, the league allows the receivers full freedom, not as it used to be with Ray Lewis, who punished anyone who tried to receive in the middle of the field. Get used to it. That's true. You can't hit like you used to be able to. You, you really can't. Um, they have toned a lot of that stuff down. Um, you can get your little moments in, but. You, you, it's like a lot of players got to second guess themselves uh, because they're scared they're going to get a flag. Um, but anyway, he said Rashad Bateman is going to be double covered a lot. Ooh, I look forward to that. And Rashad Bateman, that route running is something serious now, man. Like, and I know whenever we talk about a deep threat, everybody always talk about Hollywood, understandably. But Rashad Bateman's got a little speed now, too, now. He got a little speed now, too, so don't sleep on that. Uh, on the other side of the AFC, Travis Kelsey is going to be doubled a lot, too. And because they don't have Tyreek Hill anymore, this year we're going to really show why Mark Andrews is the best tight end in the league. I like that one. Uh, he said, okay, so here's my question. Uh, oh, okay. I thought this was just going to be like more informative type of thing. But he said, is it possible that the reason the Ravens don't sign more and better expensive players is because they don't know how much Lamar Jackson's contract will cost? I don't know if it's possible, but I would like to know if this could be happening. Send some love to all the team. Keep it clean. Keep up the good work because you're international for a reason. You're doing things right. Hey, appreciate you, man. That is such a good question. Now, um, one reason, and this is just a thought, one reason that the Ravens may not be really doing a whole bunch of craziness in free agency, more so on offense, is because there could be uncertainty with the long-term plan for Lamar Jackson. If you have a franchise quarterback, which they do, but he's not on a franchise contract. He's, he, he's on a one-year deal right now. And, of course, I know the expectation is, oh, yeah, Ravens franchise tagging, franchise tagging, da, 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 yeah. But nothing's guaranteed until it, until it happens. Um, they have come out and obviously said, yeah, we want Lamar here. We want to sign Lamar, this and that. Uh, but nothing is guaranteed until it actually happens. So I think it's sort of the same way with a John Harbaugh. If he would have been on the last year of his deal, then the, the job – the job to uh, to somebody coming in to like other coaches coming in, it could have looked a lot less attractive to them. Like, oh man, Harbaugh's on the last year of his deal. Why would I want to sign there when there's so much uncertainty? As far as somebody coming in, as far as maybe it's a wide receiver signing, free agent, a center, whatever. Somebody on offense, they could look at it like, oh, Lamar's on the last year of his deal. Why would I want to sign there? There's uncertainty there. I don't know about his future. I don't know how long he's going to be there for. So how long would I be there for? And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Jeremy. And this is, wow, I think I just saw like 20 paragraphs. So this is definitely going to take us out for this episode. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope you and your family are doing real great. It's been a real long time since I wrote in for question from subs. And, and I see because you made sure you made up for all the time you missed with all these paragraphs. But let's, let me get a little more comfortable so we, we can get into it. Uh, anyway, he said, but I thought with the recent video you put out about you being a delusional uh, fan, the answer is no, by the way. No, it was defective, a defective Ravens fan. 
Uh, I had a few thoughts I wanted to, to weigh in on. All right, here we go. And this is like more than a few thoughts. This is this a lot, but this should be fun. He says, see, I've been thinking about this a lot this offseason, and I really wanted to try and, and find a neutral view of the situation about getting more offensive weapons versus playing it safe because there's a lot of noise out there. Now, I want to say this first. I'd love to have a number one receiver like DK Metcalf on the team, and I'd be thrilled if the Ravens signed him. Just imagining DK on the field with Andrews, Hollywood, Bateman, and even Duvernay and Prochet would definitely help put us over the top and make one of our strengths even stronger. But but I'm also trying to see this from other fans' point of views. And while I definitely agree with you about the main points of getting better as a team, being too cheap on offense and how you shouldn't be too afraid to pay players that are worth the bread, there are certain things I need to take into account. And why signing a wide receiver right now may not be the best use of our money yet. You mentioned teams like the Rams, the Bucks, who signed stacked weapons like Gronk, A.B., Odell, and Allen Robinson. I definitely agree with you on getting those players in general, but there was something else I was thinking about when they got those players. These teams were very complete teams in general when they signed their extra players. They were. They certainly were. So, and I know I know where you're going with, well, I think I know where you're going with this as far as allocating money to stuff that you need instead of just trying to stack, stack, stack. But that, to me, that will make it make even more sense why the Ravens would try to get a wide receiver, a, a, a significant guy, a proven guy, um, because this could make them that much more complete at the wide receiver position. Less question marks and more answers. But anyway, he said, uh, the Bucks had an amazing defense with little holes, great wide receivers already, great offensive line, and had recently signed Tom Brady. They didn't sign A.B. and Gronk until after all those holes were filled to take them truly over the top. The Rams also had one of the best defenses in the NFL as well as they had their offensive line in place. They had Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Tyler Higby on the roster already. They had great backs in Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson Jr. And they signed Matthew Stafford. After the teams had a complete roster, they went and got they ah, they went out and got the, these extra weapons. But <coughs> excuse me, Oof. but <laughs> sorry, <laughs> we're not editing that out either. Uh, but anyway, he said, but in order for those weapons to take them over the top, the teams had to have a complete roster that can already compete for the Super Bowl. You even said this yourself, and I agree with you. The Ravens on paper are not a Super Bowl team right now, even though y'all know anything could happen. It sure could. But yeah, as of right now, and again, April 12th, 3.31 p.m., I do not think the Ravens are a Super Bowl team right now. Yes, anything could happen, and we want it to happen, but I do not think they are a Super Bowl team right here, right now. Anyway, he said they just have too many holes, especially on defense. We don't have any healthy edge rushers right now. Well, you got a Dafe away. Well, he's coming off of injury. but So I see. Well, you got Dalen Hayes. But no, he's coming off of injury. You got Tyus Bout. Oh, but he's coming off of injury. You got Derek Wolf. Oh, but he's coming off of injury. Touche. Uh, we have a solid linebacker core, but they are not anything special unless Queen somehow becomes a Devin White-esque player. Our starting secondary is pretty great, but we don't have a lot of depth behind them. We have good defensive linemen to stop the run, but not really any interior pass rush to speak of. And don't even get me started on the offensive line. <laughs> My guy is fed up. I love it, though. He said you could argue that maybe they need to add receivers for depth, but I don't think they need receivers for this purpose. The Ravens wide receiver room, including Mandrews, are not one of those holes right now. The room is one of the deepest rooms on the team. See, they are deep as far as depth, as far as bodies, but how is the quality? How is the quality of the Ravens' depth there? They technically have, again, they technically have enough receivers on the roster right now, but how's the quality of that depth? That's my thing. I know we got like seven receivers, something like that. We got some guys on the practice squad too. But if you have an opportunity to upgrade that quality where you struggle the most at in the crunch time. In crunch time, that's where they struggle the most at. Come playoff time, you see Lamar out there, you see Hollywood, that's it. You don't see nobody else on offense. Nobody. It can't be like that, man. It cannot be like that. that that's one of the biggest reasons why I want them to upgrade there. Because other guys got to show up too. There should be better options, more options. But anyway, um, he said, the room is one of the deepest rooms on the team. And I would argue that we have that number one wide receiver on the team right now. Mandrews, he's the best tight end in football right now. Hollywood is actually a pretty good receiver and had 1,000 yards last year. I think people forget that for some reason. Now, I think with, with Hollywood, a lot of people just, they focus on the drops. Um, and with, with Hollywood, they... Uh, 
like I saw somebody said, oh, Hollywood, he disappears a lot, especially last season. I'm like, well, Lamar, he Lamar got hurt. Uh, and that, that chemistry just wasn't there with uh, with Tyler Huntley. Oh, with Josh Johnson. Like, mm, yeah, it definitely wasn't there. But um, Hollywood, if Lamar would have been in the whole year last year, oof, yeah, Hollywood, easily 12, 1,300 yards, at least, at least. Like, I, and I can guarantee you that one, at least. But anyway, um, he said Bateman should get better mm -hmm, and have more opportunities this year. That's true, especially with Lamar working out with him this offseason. And Duvernay and Prochet are solid backing options to all these guys. Duvernay even has the potential to be a Debo Samuel-esque player, though maybe not in this offense. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. He said, could we, even, could, could we get even better than this, like you said? Absolutely. And again, I'd be thrilled with any star receiver they sign, but in my opinion, to even get us to Super Bowl potential, this defense and offensive line have to be fixed first. And also, Lamar himself has to improve to get back to playing to that MVP level. After all, the Ravens were the number one offense in football with even worse receivers than these and Lamar playing at a high level. See, that's, that's one of my points, too. If you saw what Lamar Jackson did with a hobbled Hollywood, it was Willie Sneed, it was Seth Roberts, it was a rookie Miles Boykin. Who else did we have that year? But you saw, oh, and Mark Andrews too. But you saw what Lamar Jackson did with that. Why not try to give him the best of the best and the offensive line? Like you, and, and, and you can do more than one thing. It doesn't have to be, all right, wide receiver, okay, that's it. We can't make any more moves now. Like, you could really, like, go go in for this thing. Um, but anyway, he said he can do it again, and he will. Man, people act like Burrow is the next big thing and that he's so much better than Lamar. But li literally all the things Burrow does well, including reading the defense and getting the ball out quick, Lamar did it in 2019 and more. Shaking my head. This has gotten pretty long, but I feel I've made my point clear. You sure did, my friend. Uh, I'd be happy if the Ravens signed any receiver, and I agree with all the points you made in your video, but I definitely feel like filling the rest of the holes are more important to start with. I'd be interested to hear your opinion, even though I bet you're going to get into it uh, in, a, in a second on the video. And anyone else's opinion on this, once again, man, thank you. <laughs> so so he, he knew. He knew. Like, yeah, there would, there would be no way that we would read all of this at one time and then just answer everything at one time. No, piece by piece, man. Um, but anyway... He said, uh, once again, thank you so much for all the Ravens content. You're definitely my favorite Ravens YouTube, and I look forward to getting that daily video and my notification. Thanks, and take care. Hey, you do the same, man. This was fun. I, I appreciate it, Jeremy. Thank you.